Hi, I'm Courtney Keck, Canadian County OSU Extension Horticulturist, and today on Virtual Gardening, I'm just going to share with you some tips for your garden this spring. Enjoy! So I'm standing in front of my blackberry plant, and mine is starting to bloom. Um, if you've got a blackberry plant starting to bloom, it's the perfect time to apply your nitrogen fertilizer. This could be blood meal, this could be urea, this could be ammonium sulfate. Those are all sources of nitrogen. Now the reason we apply it when it blooms is to increase growth, increase the berry size, and the amount of fruit it puts on. And then the other time we fertilize blackberry is right after harvest. Now is the time you'll notice if your trees and shrubs made it through that arctic blast in February or not. And behind me you can see this budlia or butterfly bush. And I um, noticed that some growth was coming up from the base. And nothing is coming from the top portion. So I don't believe this is going to grow back. This is going to make it. So what I'm going to do is cut this back to where the live growth is coming up. Don't cut back your spring flowering bulbs just yet. These are daffodils and you can see the foliage is still green. You want to wait until it yellows and then you cut it back. What's happening is that while this is green, there's nutrients in here that the bulbs or the rhizomes are going to take in and absorb and use for next year's growth and display of flowers. Now is a great time to plant new trees and right here this is a saucer magnolia one of the few trees that flowers in early march and it does lose its leaves it's not a southern magnolia but anyways on the topic of planting trees you want to make sure that you plant it at the same level that it was in the container at ground level unless you have poorly drained soil um, things like heavy clay soil so in that case, you would plant it about one or two inches above grade level. Okay. Also, it's a great idea to eliminate any weeds growing around the base to um, get rid of that competition for nutrients and water. You can mulch it with some wood chips, something that'll break down over time and benefit the, the tree later. But it will also um, wood chips, that kind of mulch will benefit the tree by conserving moisture and um, keeping it at a consistent temperature so that it's not fluctuating. Don't rely solely on rainfall to irrigate your newly planted tree. Make sure it's getting at least an inch of water a week. A slow drip is the best kind of watering for newly planted trees. Um, you can either set it on a drip irrigation system, you can buy something like a, a gator bag that slowly releases water over time. Um, you can even do a homemade method where you poke a few holes in the bottom of a milk jug and fill it up with water. Do that with a five gallon bucket, something that's going to slowly drip water at the base of the tree. Don't prune newly planted trees wait a year or two so that it can establish. The more leaves that are on the tree, the more that the plant photosynthesizes, thus the faster it grows and establishes. As you can see, it's always windy in Oklahoma. And so if you need to stake a tree, uh, those that are top heavy, this one isn't necessarily, it's not top heavy, so I'm not staking it. But if you need to stake a tree, Go ahead and do that for the first year, and then remember to take off the stake after that first year. If you've had problems with bagworms in the past, late May and early June is the time of year to treat for them. You can use a product called BT. Scientific name is Bacillus thuringiensis. And the product would look something like this. You would mix it. It's a very small amount per gallon of water, maybe half a teaspoon or a little bit more. And then you can hook it up to a um, hose-in sprayer. So that'll give you more coverage if it's on a hose-in sprayer. And spray the tree yourself. Now bagworms typically attack your evergreens like your cedars, arborvitae, 
things like that, but they can attack other things if it's a bad year for them. So late May, early June is when you treat for bagworms. As far as the vegetable garden goes, you can plant things like beans, cucumbers, okra, tomatoes, peppers, pumpkins, and summer squash right now. And then into the first couple of weeks of May, you can plant cantaloupe, southern peas, winter squash, sweet potato, and watermelon. Another tip for planting your vegetables this time of year is to plant in stages or successively and then um, you can have a continual harvest throughout the growing season. There are pests like cutworm, squash vine borer that like to bore into the base of some plants. Cutworm can affect those like corn and tomato and squash vine borer likes the cucurbit crops like obviously squash cucumber, cantaloupe, things like that. And here's some tips for controlling those. First off, before um, it's an IPM or integrated pest management strategy um, before you reach for the chemicals. So here's my little patio tomato. And what you can do is use aluminum foil and wrap it around the base of the plant. You can do this for corn too as it comes up. You can also use empty toilet paper rolls. Now you can cut this to a couple inches or cut it in half and um, put it around the base of the plant. Another uh, tactic that helps reduce pests in the vegetable garden is using a floating row cover to cover your crops. And then uh, you can simply unroll it or remove it in the early morning uh, when your plants are in flower to ensure pollination happens and then cover it back up. Now it's not gonna completely eliminate pests, but it will reduce your numbers. Now is a great time, May into early June, to establish your warm season grasses like Bermuda grass. And you can establish it by seed, sod, plugs, or anything like that. And then you can also start fertilizing in May. We suggest fertilizing your warm season grasses every other month with one pound of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet. And that is if you don't get the soil tested to know exactly what it needs. But generally, you'll need nitrogen only throughout the growing season. If you're using urea as your nitrogen source, that's a 4600, then it would be two pounds of that per thousand square feet every other month, May to September. As well, you can check for grubs this time of year by digging up a one foot by one foot area and simply checking underneath for grubs. And if you find at least white grubs in that one by one area, then you know that you should treat for them. If you have questions about what product to use to treat them, then contact your local county extension office. Tell us what it is. Oh, shop shocking can only touch nothing to push, not button, where the push will be button. 